Roger, it's lovely to see you here at MCM today. On the subject of your children, you've both been rather mistreated in season five and season six. I mean, how do you, how does that feel, do you think, for Mace? It's a very important question because I think Mace's primary motivation in everything he does is his family, his children, his family, his estates. I think these are the things that matter most. And then and Mace hasn't got any particular ambition to sit on the Iron Throne. I think he's quite happy for his daughter to sit there, but he cares deeply about his children and will go to any lengths to make sure they're safe. So it's been a very important season for that reason. And of course Marjorie's with Tom and now, but she was with Joffrey before, but what kind of king do you think Tommen's going to make? Uh, it depends on the degree to which he's prepared to let Marjorie guide him, because I think the way things are going, it's going to be her who is the power behind the throne. Of course, she's not strictly speaking on the throne, she is the consort of the king. So um, I think provided he's prepared to let her guide him, then I think he's going to be all right, because Marjorie, being a good Tyrell, is going to be very successful. Now, at one point, Merrin Trant, last season, was talking about the Tyrells when you were in Bravos, and he was saying, when I overheard him, saying that the Tyrells were all traitors. What do you think about that? Nonsense. I mean, it's rubbish. What would, what would Trant know, anyway? He knows nothing about politics. He's a fool. On season five of the Blu-ray on DVD commentary, writer Brian Cogman's talking about Mace's character and how he's different from the books. And he's saying that Mace's character isn't as buffoonish as people might think he is in reality and kind of intimated that Mace might have something a little bit going on, like he's tricking people. Maybe a little bit like Pycelle or Littlefinger or Varys maybe. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that's probably true. But unlike the others, I suspect, I said, I don't quite care what we're about because I don't want to sort of give anything away. But I think it's probably true that Mace's cunning is all directed at keeping his family safe. He's not ambitious in the way that the others are, nor is he petty in the way that the others are. So he's a pretty genuine, open man, but he's, he's not a fool, no. I think the scene I'd like to film might be involving Mace back at home in Highgarden, because we never shot anything there. So I'd quite like to see Highgarden created for the screen. And where would you like to see Game of Thrones go from here, do you think? It's such a difficult question, you know that. And it's, I'm not being evasive or coy about it. The problem is, of course, there's, there's that tremendous line in the history, boys, where we're reminded of history just one thing after another. And in a sense, Westeros, the history of Westeros, made up as it is, is just one thing after another. And there is a sense in which you could go on for forever, and it would become a great big film version of the Archers. But they're not going to let that happen. So. I think it needs to come to a good conclusion, which I think will mean a good and stable monarch sitting on the Iron Throne. Now, who that will be, A, I don't know, and B, if I didn't, I wouldn't tell you. That is true. That is true. And on that note, it's been lovely to talk to you, Roger. Thank you so much. Nice to see you again.